So for about a year, linguistic scholars of the Master's University and the Master's Seminary have been working on a translation called the Legacy Standard Bible. It's come to completion now. The first printed form of it is uh, the New Testament Psalms and Proverbs. It's the best English translation I have ever read. It's, it's the most diligently prepared translation. And one of the wonderful features of it is it calls God by the name He asked to be remembered by. I want you just to listen, standing, to Psalm 37 from the living Word of God, the living Word of the eternal God whose name is Yahweh. This is the Legacy Standard Bible translation, first time read publicly any place. Do not fret because of evildoers. Be not envious toward doers of unrighteousness, for they will wither quickly like the grass and fade like the green herb. Trust in Yahweh and do good. Dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. Delight yourself in Yahweh, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to Yahweh. Trust in Him, and He will do it. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as the noonday. Be still in Yahweh and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret because of Him who prospers in His way, because of the man who carries out schemes of wickedness. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil doing, for evildoers will be cut off. But those who hope for Yahweh, they will inherit the land. Yet a little while, and the wicked man will be no more. You will look carefully at his place, and he will not be there. But the lowly will inherit the land and will delight themselves in abundant peace. The wicked schemes against the righteous and gnashes at him with his teeth. The Lord laughs at him, for he sees that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn the sword and bent their bow to cast down the afflicted and the needy, to slay those who are upright in conduct. Their sword will enter their own heart, and their bows will be broken. Better is a little of the righteous than the abundance of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked will be broken, but Yahweh sustains the righteous. Yahweh knows the days of the blameless, and their inheritance will be forever. They will not be ashamed in the time of evil, and in the days of famine they will be satisfied. But the wicked will perish, and the enemies of Yahweh will be like the glory of the pastures. They vanish. In smoke they vanish away. The wicked borrows and does not pay back, but the righteous is gracious and gives. For those blessed by Him will inherit the land, but those cursed by Him will be cut off. The footsteps of a man are established by Yahweh, and He delights in His way. When He falls, He will not be hurled headlong, because Yahweh is the one who sustains His hand. I was young, and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or His seed begging bread. All day long He is gracious and lends, and His seed is a blessing. Depart from evil and do good, so you will dwell forever. For Yahweh loves justice and will not forsake His holy ones. They are kept forever. But the seed of the wicked will be cut off. The righteous will inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous utters wisdom, and his tongue speaks justice. The law of his God is in his heart. His steps do not slip. The wicked spies upon the righteous and seeks to put him to death. Yahweh will not forsake him in his hand. He will not condemn him when he is judged. Hope for Yahweh and keep his way, 
and he will exalt you to inherit the land. But the wicked are cut off. You will see it. I've seen a wicked, ruthless man spreading himself like a luxuriant tree in its native soil. Then he passed away, and behold, he was no more. I sought for him, but he could not be found. Observe the blameless man, and behold the upright, for the man of peace will have a posterity, but transgressors will be altogether destroyed. The posterity of the wicked will be cut off, but the salvation of the righteous is from Yahweh. He is their strength in time of distress. Yahweh helps them and protects them. He protects them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in Him. Is that not a magnificent portion of Scripture? And did you feel the almost jarring reality of calling God by His name? He wants you to do that. It's that intimate. He wants you to call Him by His name. Jesus said, John 8, 58, before Abraham was, I am. And He was declaring His deity as the I am. What does it mean that God's name is Yahweh, I am that I am? It expresses His eternality, the fact that He is uncreated, that He's the source of all life, that He is timeless, that He is unchangeable, that He is self-existent and self-sufficient. When you say Lord, you're talking about His sovereignty. In all English Bibles, Yahweh is translated Lord in uppercase letters, but that just repeats Adonai. It doesn't give you the name of God, which is the covenant name that expresses His eternal being. He wants you to know His name. And you say it all the time. Every time you say hallelujah, you say praise Yahweh. This translation, for that and a number of reasons, is a priceless treasure, amazing effort. And uh, this is the first form of it, New Testament with Psalms and Proverbs. The full Bible will be out later this year, but we're going to give these to every man at Shepherd's Conference. And I know you want to get your hands on mine, but <laughs> this is the only one I've got. 